What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video here on Loud and Proud. So today we're going to be working on the RestoGen again. Today we're going to be installing a fuel pin. There's a couple other things we've got to do. One of those things being the fuel screws got to be modified. We still need some drive line upgrades and modifications. Just some worn out parts that need to be gone through to make this thing run optimally down the road. Killer dowel pin, we're going to do that in case it hasn't been done. You didn't see the previous video. We did put new gauges in the truck. And we still haven't installed the fuel pressure gauge. I think what I'm missing is actually a banjo bolt. And the banjo bolt will essentially, it'll basically replace one of the banjo bolts that are already running into the fuel system. And then what it'll actually do is be a banjo bolt that has a threaded in end on the back side of it so I can thread into it with my piece that needs to read the fuel pressure, which is what this will plug into. It's a little digital um, one, so it's not actually like a fuel line, pressure line running to the back of the gauge, which I think is like an old school thing. Almost like you see like there, there's a fuel line. I don't know if it's actually this one or not. I'm just giving an example. It'll be taking out one of those banjo bolts and replacing it with basically another one, but it has threading on the backside so I can thread in the fuel pressure monitoring sensor into the back of it. That way we can plug this in and read our fuel pressure. So for part one of this video, for the first fuel upgrade, let's start with doing the fuel pin. And then once we do the fuel pin, at least from that point, we'll be able to compare the difference in power and what the truck feels like going down the road, checking on the gauges and stuff like that, going from the fuel pin to the governor spring. The fuel pin aspect of it is not that hard to do, but you do dismantle different components than you do for the governor spring itself. For the fuel pin, you're gonna just take out these four screws on the top, this one banjo bolt on the side, and then other than that, um, that's pretty much it in terms of dismantling. For the governor spring, you're gonna be taking apart um, this bolt here, the one down low. You're gonna be taking off this one out of the top. You're gonna be taking off the four holding on the top half of the pump, taking off some linkage, some other small things, and then lifting it off swapping out your spring, putting it all back together. It, it's gonna take a lot more time, and so I figured this is gonna be real easy to just do the uh, top portion here for the fuel pin first, and then we can do a comparison of what it feels like driving this truck going from the fuel pin to the fuel pin with the governor spring, and then we're gonna go from the fuel pin with the governor spring to the fuel pin, governor spring, and modifying the fuel screw. So what we're actually gonna do before we install the fuel pin is drive it on stock power levels to actually use these gauges, make sure that they're reading on stock power, and then we can compare those up to the aftermarket power changes. <laughs> how this goes. Well, the gauges are working, the two that are hooked up, which is your boost down low and your EGTs up here. It says we're just over 400 on our exhaust temperature. Here's our boost gauge. Made about 11 pounds of boost there, you know. Crazy big boost though. We're only in, a, only in fourth gear going like 40 miles an hour. <laughs> We'll do it again here, a little pull. Almost, almost 20 pounds of boost there. And exhaust temperatures got up almost to 700. They're going down now, they're already down to 500, but they were at about 700 degrees when we uh, pinned it there and we hit about 20 pounds of boost. You can hear the turbo bark a little bit. I was kind of wondering what the turbo was going to sound like with a brand new big intake on there and people say, oh, intakes are a waste of money. Like literally I've had people comment that, you know, putting a bigger cold air intake is a waste of money and upgrading that air filter is a waste of money. First off, even if it didn't increase power from stock at all, but at least it was a brand new clean air filter that can pull in more air than just through that dirty old box under the hood, how would that not be better to get more clean air? I don't know, maybe that's just me. Truck sounds good, runs good, super stoked. Can't wait to get the fuel pressure hooked up so that can actually be accurate. Um, that way we know whether or not we're starving our injectors and whatnot um, once we do the rest of the modifications that we're gonna do to the fuel system. Intake alone, 
makes the thing sound so much better. One thing I will say that I've noticed with this truck recently is whenever I drive it, I kind of get a little bit of a burning diesel smell from under the hood. It kind of like sounds dumb when you think about it, but what I'm trying to say is like, if you look close, you actually see around the injectors, which we're gonna be replacing, but around the injectors, there's a little bit of fuel around almost all of them. You can see that right there. Like it, it's very wet around the injectors. And I think maybe that there's a, a little bit of a leak. I don't know if it's around the, you know, those uh, crush washers or, you know, they're just not seated right or what, but there's definitely a little bit of diesel fuel leaking around at least four of them. These four in the middle, the back one, not so much, the front one, not so much, but the middle four for sure looks like there's a little bit of diesel leaking around them and you can kind of understand how that would make kind of like a burning diesel smell coming from out of the engine bay into the cab a little bit. So we're going to definitely have to get that addressed. So that'll probably have that issue fixed once we swap out the injectors and put new ones in properly. That should take care of that hopefully. Let's get to the install of the fuel pin upgrade. First thing we're going to do is break loose this line here that actually takes air pressure from the intake side here and pushes it into this fuel system and actually helps with feeding fuel and keeping pressure in the pump. Just don't lose the small washers there on the front and the back of that thing because it's not good if you lose those. That one's loose. That one's and they're pretty good. I think we got it broke loose though. That's loose. And that one's loose. Perfect. Don't lose these screws or you're screwed. I'm gonna carefully lift this up. This is just kind of the top plate. Just kind of set that aside. Don't lose anything. Now take this off carefully without ripping it. Because if you do rip it, you're in some trouble. That is gross. I don't know what this is. But that's nasty. I don't know if it's like gelled fuel or just grease or I'm not I'm not really sure what this is from but this pump is new by the way. When I had bought the truck at first it had a horrible fuel leak and so they actually put a brand new OEM pump in the truck. I actually probably should have had them just do the modifications while they were in there but at the time I didn't even think about it. But it is a brand new pump, but I'm not sure what this is. I'm guessing some sort of grease, but it's kind of kind of would seem weird. Now, when it comes to removing this fuel pin, it's actually pretty pretty easy. You're gonna take a 10 mil, put it on the stock one. It's kind of notched out, as you can see right there. It's got flat edges for a 10 millimeter wrench. Just kind of hold it with the thumb like this. Take your 10 mil for the top. Give it a little tiny rotation. It broke breaks loose pretty darn easy. Just don't lose the nut. It should just push out there. Now there's a washer on the top, so don't lose it. It's really freaking tiny, but you gotta have it. There's your stock fuel pin. Okay, here's our aftermarket fuel pin. There's a bunch of different manufacturers that make these. This is one that I just found online, and I mean, said it was a 40 horse fuel pin. Whether you actually get 40 horse gain out of this without doing any other fuel system modifications, I don't know, but that's just what it said. And then in terms of the direction you put it on this diaphragm, not necessarily the most important thing. It's the direction you set it in there that's most important, I believe. Take your 10 millimeter wrenches again, twist it on there. Aftermarket fuel pin, 40 horse fuel pin, factory. They look extremely different. And in terms of the exact specifications for why they cut that fuel pin a certain way, the aftermarket one, I couldn't give you the exact specifications as to why, but it's supposed to make more power. So we're gonna go with it. Then what you're gonna wanna do is set this fuel pin facing with the notched outside facing your radiator. I don't know if there's any real science to it. I go opposite corners and then slowly go back and forth until they're all kind of in nice and evenly. But don't tighten that thing down ridiculously to where you crack those plastic washers. Just kind of get it snug and then give it one, one tight pull with your hand about and then that's really about it. We should be good. Now this truck, just so you guys are very aware, did not like puff any smoke or anything. 
other than a little tiny dusting every time you started it up, but that's just kind of like a first gen thing. Other than that, never really popped any smoke when you got on it on the road. It just kind of got louder, <laughs> but it, it, it didn't really blow any black smoke or anything like that. If we see that, that would probably be due to more fuel. You blow smoke now. When you would rev it up before we did this and we still had the stock fuel pin in here, it didn't blow any smoke and smoke does not necessarily mean power. It can mean more potential power because it's getting more fuel, but more smoke in general is not a sign of more power. It's just a sign of more fuel. But what we're gonna do is rev this up a couple times so you can see the visible smoke that this thing blows every time you hit the throttle now. But then after that, we're gonna get on the road and see how she drives. Not that this is the most important thing, but that it is kinda cool. Just over 700 degrees, boost pressure. Doesn't quite make 20 pounds right now. <laughs> Close, but not quite. Almost 20 pounds just now. But uh, the smoke is kind of cool. I mean, I know some people hate on it, but hey. Deny that's a lot of fun. And the best part about this truck behind me is it looks like a beautiful truck that you just picked up that like from the exterior when you're looking at it just looks like a really nice truck that was kept really nice from over the years but in reality this truck was rough this truck is what i i would consider like a junkyard pickup and we just saved it you know it's not the cheapest route to go if you don't know how to do it all yourself like i don't know anything about paint and body work and so i paid out the rear end for paint and body work on this thing, but I bought a parts truck so he didn't have to like, you know, try fixing and bondoing up a bunch of dents and crap. I just got rust free, dent free panels and redid everything. And then he just, you know, went through and painted everything and uh, turned out really good. We did the bed liner. I mean, the truck just looks, it just looks really good. And this truck came as like a beat up work truck. Paint was gone. The truck didn't have any rust on it, but it was just dented to crapping. The doors were smashed, fenders were smashed. The bedside looked like somebody just threw sledgehammers at it from every angle. I mean, it was just, it was not good. And we've turned it into what it is. And it's got so much freaking more to go. Like, it's just crazy. We gotta rewire the trailer wiring. We've gotta redo the rear axle in terms of fluids and diff cover, resealing. We still gotta finish some stuff on the frame in terms of just coating it up. We've gotta finish some small components of the exhaust. We're gonna do some driveline components. Stuff like that. A lot of that stuff I'm gonna have, you know, outsourced to get done. Just for stuff that I don't know how to do, like driveline stuff. But most of that stuff we're gonna do here in our shop and just do it ourselves because most of it's not that complicated. But I'm just super excited for the progress. It's gonna be a lot of fun. The fuel pin really did help. It made a big difference in terms of the little bit of power that you got compared to stock. Now I'm comparing that to stock power. Compared to stock power, that little 40 horse pin, it does make it noticeably different. Or like, let's say you're just pulling, you know, a little car hauler trailer or something for small equipment. It would definitely help with something like that. It's gonna give you just enough more power to you know, help it with those small jobs that you just wish you had a little bit more horse to get up and go a little bit better. It's good for that kind of stuff. If you're wanting a race truck, you're gonna need a lot more than just a fuel pin, of course. Can't wait until we can get you the rest of it here in the next uploads. And also, if you wanna to enter to win this truck, you've got six days left to enter to win this thing, plus $5,000 cash. We give away a truck 
pretty much every month after this truck though we're going to do about a two week break to make sure we can get all orders caught up because that Whistling Diesel first unit that we gave away last month really swamped us and it's got a lot of people unhappy about having to wait for their orders. We ship out every single order though, don't let anybody tell you otherwise, we ship out every single order. We do not skip orders, we ship out all of them. We try to ship them out in the order that we get them. There's a lot of things to, to explain about how the business works in terms of all the moving parts and the people packing and stuff coming in and getting shipped out. There's a lot of moving parts and uh, it, it sounds easy when you're like, well, I only ordered, you know, this. It shouldn't take that long to ship that. No, it wouldn't if it was the only order we got. But since we have lots of orders, and I'm not going to give out a specific number because I can't legally do that because it was for sweepstakes purposes. So now we have to catch up on all those because it got us completely overloaded. But we are projecting within these next two weeks we'll be all caught up to speed again. No, that's not the way it normally goes. Yes, that's how it went for about a month, but that's not the way things normally are. We've got plenty of employee power now to where for the next giveaway, once we start out with zero orders to fulfill and we launch it, orders will be going out quick like they used to and we'll be back on track. Thank you so much. Don't forget to enter to win this truck plus $5,000 cash. Giveaway ends in six days, so don't miss out on this. And right now, every single order is gonna get random amounts of cash in it. It could be a dollar, five dollars, twenty dollars, fifty, a hundred. Um, every single order is gonna get random amounts of cash in it until November 11th, which is also the last day to enter to win this truck. So hit the link in the description, lmpgear.com. You can buy a hat, a hoodie, a shirt, a keychain, a decal, anything you want off the store. It can be a small item, it can be a lot of items, but no matter what, all you need is that one lucky entry and this could be parked in your driveway. Thank you so much. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.